All right, welcome back to Sandwell. We're talking all things mechanical, and today we are talking about elbows in duct systems. Bear with me guys, uh, I've had a lot of comments and I've had uh, a lot of private messages. I've had people here locally that uh, want me to go through how to do a full duct system or a load calculation on like a 2,000 square foot building or an office or a house and how to do that thing from A to Z. And that's what we're getting at. But in order for us to get to that point, there's a lot of things we've got to take into consideration and know prior to even doing that. Now. Let's just say you're working for a larger company or you, you've got uh, you know, a $4,000 software program at your house or at your office and you wanna plug some information into it and it'll spit you out some blueprints, that is great. But, like I said, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, the program is only as good as the information that you put into it. If you put garbage into it, you get garbage out of it. This is true for so many things in life and the software is definitely one of those things. Something to take into consideration whenever we're doing loads, whenever we're doing duct designs, when we are picking out equipment, is how they all interact with each other, okay? One thing that is looked, often overlooked, okay, um, one of the biggest things, I think, is, and I've said it before in other videos, is the, a friction, you know, the actual design friction rate for a duct system. Too many people are using the 0.1 inch, and the systems are not working, which is fine for me because then I can come back and I can be the bad guy that designs the system correctly and charges the customer thousands of dollars to do it. I don't want to be that guy. I really don't. I really want you guys to do it the correct way. So today, like I said, I want to look at elbows. Okay. Let's say we've got a duct, or uh, I'm sorry, let's say we've got a furnace and an air handler or an evaporator coil down in a garage, okay, and or it's in a basement, and we are, it's a vertical application to where our airflow is going up, and then we've got to turn that airflow to go horizontally across the attic floor or across the um, ceiling of the basement so that we can start running branches out to our, uh, um, the rest of our house. We know that we're putting a, a, a big bend in this duct system, okay? How do we know what the total effective length is of the system for designing if we don't know what the length is of that actual elbow, okay? So that's what I wanna talk about. Now, let's just say that underneath of this elbow here that I've got on my screen, we have a, a vertical duct or a furnace or something like that. This is a 12 by 12 duct, and we've got to make a 90 degree bend and shoot it across the base. There's a couple different ways we can go about bending that air, okay? In order for us to design our system, we have to know what the length is, the length equivalent of this elbow is so that we can design for our friction drop, our total effective length, all that stuff. When we're looking at elbows, there's a bunch of different elbows we can look at. We can simply go in the manual deep catalog or maybe your software has this. Uh, we can pick out what elbow we're using and we'll boom, spit us out a total effective length of that, or I should say not total, but an effective length of that fitting. This particular elbow here, I see a lot of these. I, I don't know why, I see a lot of these in commercial applications to where you've got a nice radius elbow, okay, on the outer edge of this, but then on the inside you've got a hard 90. The benefit to these is that they can fit in a little more compact area. I think sheet metal shops just enjoy making these. Um, that's, that's the only thing I can figure. The benefit to these elbows is they're a little bit more compact. The drawback to these elbows is that they flow like garbage, okay? Now they do flow a heck of a lot better than a hard 90 to where, you know, you've just got a 12 by 12 up and then a 12 by 12 out. Uh, you've got a hard 90 there. Those are absolutely horrible. You could try to put turning veins in them to help force that air around that turn, but still that's not nearly as good as this, but let's look at this one here. What happens is with these elbows, when you've got that hard 90 on the bottom, you create a very low pressure area on the 
upper horizontal surface of that uh, of that 90. Now you can see what I've done here is I've just put a few marks in on the sidewall of this to kind of represent what happens in in this duct. You get it's almost like an eddy, like an eddy current in like a stream where that air kind of curls around in this area. What happens is that creates turbulence. So if this was a single wall sheet metal duct, I guarantee if you are forcing anything more than 800 feet per minute through this thing, you will be able to stand next to that duct and hear it pulsating and you can hear that air kind of gurgling around inside that thing and that's that turbulence you're hearing smacking against these, uh, the side walls of these. That is a huge downfall of this type of an elbow. Now, how can, we, uh, how can we better that? Well, you could simply just uh, radius the bottom edge of that. Cut that hard 90 out and put a radius in there. So if we're looking at a, an elbow like this, what would the effective length of something like this be? You, like I said, if you were to go into a catalog or you were to go into the software that you're using, you could probably find an effective length of something like this somewhere around uh, 60 to 90 feet, okay? But how do they come up with that number? Okay, that, that's what I wanna go over, is how they're actually coming up with this number here. There's a little bit of a formula that we're gonna look at. Um, and in this formula, we are going to look at uh, some numbers that uh, are actually kind of arbitrary, but uh, uh, nonetheless, what is the actual length of this, this fitting? Okay, we wanna know what this fitting is. Now, like I said, you could go in your software, you could go in manual deep book, you could figure out what this fitting is, but let's just say you're, uh, you need to know it, you know, and you need to know why you, you know it actually, it is what it is. What we're gonna do is we've got a formula here. That formula is 100 times the loss coefficient times the Reynolds number times the velocity divided by 4,007 squared. And then we're gonna divide that all by our design friction rate, okay? So I had no clue what Reynolds number was um, until I was at a IGSPA conference and we were talking about laminar flow in geothermal pipe systems. Okay, and now at the time I was 19 years old and I'm in a class with a bunch of, you know, guys who had been doing stuff uh, like this for their entire life. And they start talking Reynolds number, turbulent flow, laminar flow, things like that. I was like, dang, I need to uh, figure out what they're talking about. Um, so anyway, this Reynolds number is an arbitrary number that is associated with the turbulent flow of a fluid, okay, whether it be water, air, whatever. When we're looking at a fitting like this first one, we will see that we've got a pretty turbulent eddy in, uh, in this uh, section of the duct, okay, that, that uh, horizontal section of this, uh, this duct. When we come to something like this, we've got a nice radius there's a less uh, likely chance that we're gonna have uh, a lot of turbulence in something like this, so our Reynolds number associated with that would be lower. In the Manual D book, we've got a few different charts here that we are looking at, okay? Uh, we've got our fit fitting loss coefficients, and then um, we also have our Reynolds number adjustment. So, we're going back to that formula it is um, 100 times our first number here, okay? So what we're doing is we're gonna look at the width of this and we're looking at the overall height of this. Now they kinda label it, I would, in my mind, backwards, but we are going to take this horizontal divided by this vertical here and we're gonna get some sort of a ratio, okay, one to one ratio, two to one ratio, one to two ratio, whatever. For this particular application, we've got one foot and one foot, so that gives us a ratio of one, right? Um, so what we would do is we would go down on this fitting loss coefficient um, table, we'd go under our one to one ratio column, and then we would look horizontally over at our radius versus what our height is here. Okay, they call it their RW. Uh, why they're considering this the width, I don't know, but it's the radius over 
whatever this dimension is here, okay? So you can see my radius for this particular fitting is four inches and we've got a length there of 12 inches. We are somewhere in the 0.3 of the radius to W. So we would go across to our fitting loss coefficient table and we would look at whatever our number is there associated with that. So for this one, uh, our, our fitting loss coefficient, the C, is going to be a 1.2, okay? So that's our first little bit of information that we are going to put into our you know, calculation here. So it would be the, the length is equal to 100 times 1.2 times our Reynolds number adjustment. So we go down to our next table, which is our Reynolds number adjustment. Okay, you see it there? And this is where we have to know what the CFM is flowing through this particular duct, okay? So let's just say we've got 900 CFM flowing through this 12 by 12, which would, that would be on the upper range of what we can flow through this um, before we hit a maximum velocity. We go down to the 800 to 1000 range. We go across our RW, our Reynolds number adjustment um, is going to be a zero, or I'm sorry, a 1.03 because our radius to W is a um, less than a 0.75. That's our second little bit. Now, we have another little formula here that we got to work on. It is, now we're going to take our velocity that we have going through this duct. We are going to divide that by 4,007, and then we're going to square that, and then we're going to plug that into the rest of this calculation. So we know that we've got 900 CFM flowing through here. We will pull out our duct calculator. We have a 12 by 12, I'm on the back side of our ACA duct calculator. We're gonna to go to a 12 by 12. So I've lined, come on. There we are. I have lined, you can see right there, the 12 on the blue scale with the 12 on the gray. I'm off a little bit, that's no biggie. So we've lined 12 by 12 up. We'll go down to the next blue, okay? That is our volume. We're gonna find 900 on that. And then we will go straight down and figure out what our velocity is. So we've got nine, and we got C800 and a thousand right in the middle is 900. We go directly down below that and boom, 900 feet per minute. So yeah, that is on the upper end of what we want to push through here. So our velocity going through this thing is 900 feet per minute. So we take our 900 feet per minute, we divide it by that 4,007. We will square that, and then we will plug that back into the rest of our calculation. Let's see what we got. 900 divided by the 4,007, square that, and that leaves us with a 0 0.05044 blah, 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 blah. Okay. Now, I'm just going to leave that in the calculator. We are going to start doing some more multiplication here. We're going to multiply that times the 1.03 as our Reynolds number adjustment. We will multiply that again times our 1.2, which is the fitting loss coefficient, okay, based on our height and width. And then we will multiply all of that times 100, and it gives us a 6.235, right? Good, well, that doesn't mean our duct is um, 6.235 because we have to divide that all by whatever our design friction rate is for the entire duct system, okay? So let's just say that we were, um, you know, we had already designed the whole system and our design friction rate is, let's just say a point, uh, zero eight one. Point zero eight one. So that would mean that our total length of this fitting right here, is the equivalent to 77 feet of straight metal duct, right? So whenever we're trying to figure out what our total effective length is, we will say, okay, this one here is, this this fitting is worth 77 feet, okay? So then that's what we'll use to, to determine what our total effective length is. Now, that will change a little bit based on what our friction rate is, but 
John, you don't know what your friction rate is yet. And that's true. So what we can do is we'll go back here and let's just figure out what our limits are. Uh, let's just say our friction rate could go as low as 0 0.06. That would mean that that elbow there is worth a little over 100 feet. Or our velocity, or our friction rate, I'm sorry, uh, could be as high as a 0.18, which would mean that that length there is, could be as short as 34 feet. So if we take the average of those two, that would leave us with a 69 foot length there. That would put us somewhere right in the middle. It'd give us a good starting ground. If then once we go through, figure out what our actual friction rate is and we need to make adjustments and we can do so here. Um, but that, that just gives you an idea of how to figure out and determine what your effective length is of a fitting. But we're gonna actually look a little bit further here. Let's just say that um, we had some space constraints and we had to do something like this to where we still need to flow 900 CFM and we went through our duct calculator and saw that in order to get 900 CFM through an elbow and we only have so much height space to work with, it would have to be six inches by 25 inches, okay? What does that mean in terms of, the, of the effective length of this fitting? Well, what you'll find is when you have airflow moving in a radius, okay, in some sort of a turn, the lower that that turn affects the upper and lower limits of that airflow, uh, the less restrictive it is, okay? So if we look at this, we will see that from the inside of this rate, or yeah, from the inside of this elbow to the outside of this elbow is six inches, okay? That will actually be less restrictive than even this one over here, which is 12 inches, okay? Um, the velocity remains the same, the CFM remains the same, but what you'll find is the effective length of something like this is actually less than something square, which is kind of remarkable. But um, when we, uh, another way to consider this is when we look at, let's say we had to make this turn also, but we had to make it in the other direction to where we're coming up with the six by 25, but we had to make it in the other way to where we are now 25 by six. So this makes more sense here where now we've got 25 inches between our inner and outer. What happens is in something like this, as the air or fluid molecules are moving, they are at different rates from the inside to the outside. That, chain, that, that differential in rates is what starts to cause like micro turbulence in these, um, these elbows and bends that little bit of micro turbulence is what causes the pressure uh, to increase, the pressure drop to increase across a fitting like this. When we've got air moving in a shorter radius, like we do on this one, you're not gonna see as big a, uh, a you know change in the flow between the inside and the outside of the bend as you would on something like this. So this, I've already gone through and done the math for these. If we're losing on that first example, the uh, 77 feet, you would be losing in the upper 60 feet with this middle example. And then this last one here, you'd probably be almost 80 to 90 feet of uh, effective length on something like this. Keep your stuff square, but if you have to, bending the air in, in, uh, in this direction here, which I think they would, uh, they call these short, uh, short elbows Yeah, so you've got a square elbow a short elbow and then the long elbow, which is that last one we looked at there um, Let me see if I can get her here. Yeah, that'd be a long elbow the uh, the long elbows flow less um, Less efficiently than the short elbows. So that's just something else. I want to talk you know, just give you something to think about whenever we're looking at the effective length of fittings and trying to figure out what the total effective length is of any duct system is how we are laying our elbows out. So, all right guys, I'll see you next time. Take care.